Just blaze. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Uh. Killer. All the girls see the. Look at his kicks. Look at his car. All I say is. Welcome back. What is good, everybody? I'm Fox at Foxy Games UK, your regular aggregate source of the latest game news, rumor, and video game discussion. Some views expressed in our videos are those of third parties and do not necessarily represent the views of Foxy Games UK. Keep up to date with all the latest game news and shenanigans. Follow me via Twitter at FoxyGames underscore UK. All relevant links can be found in this video's description. No time to waste at all today. First up, Detroit Become Human is under fire for controversial domestic abuse scenes in the game. And who's leading the charge on this? Yep, it's the UK. UK MP and children's campaigners have expressed concern, courtesy of Eurogamer.net. Here's the full story. So children's campaigners and a UK member of parliament has criticized upcoming PlayStation 4 exclusive Detroit Become Human for its controversial domestic abuse scene. At Paris Games Week in October, Detroit hit the headlines after Sony released a trailer for the game in which scenes of domestic abuse and child abuse were featured heavily. In the video, we see Android housekeeper Kara thrusted into an uncomfortable domestic abuse situation. She's charged with the taking care of a young girl who is attacked by her belt-wielding single father. Now, the video tries to get the point across that you're able to change the course of events at multiple points within the scene. And the video shows that one of the potential moments sees the young girl shoot her father as he chases Kara. Now, here's a quote. The scene we are presenting is a very important moment in Kara's story. We discover that Kara is owned by a human, Todd Williams, the single father of a little girl called Alice. The developers at Quantic Dream said at the time. He went on to say, confronted with Todd's violence toward his little girl, Kara feels compelled to disobey and risk her life to save Alice. Now, over the weekend, UK tabloid The Mail on Sunday published an article that includes strong quotes from various children's campaigners who questioned the decision to include a scene about domestic abuse, and Sony has been asked for a response. The story has since been picked up by The Sun newspaper, and there's a similar article with an Australian angle on the website of Nine News. Andy Burrows of the NSPCC said, any video game that trivializes or normalizes child abuse, neglect or domestic violence for entertainment is unacceptable. Peter Saunders, founder of the National Association of People Abused in Childhood said, Abusers will get off on this stuff and the other thing we know beyond question is that videos of sick games end up being played by children. Scarily, the proliferation of salacious and abusive images is actually encouraging violence and abuse. And we know that abuse in all its forms is escalating on this planet. So why not help to tackle it constructively rather than sensationalize and make money out of it? Hmm. Now, in an interview with Eurogamer at Paris Games Week, Detroit uh, Development Chief David Cage defended the inclusion of the domestic abuse scene, saying, I try to tell a story that matters to me, that I find moving, interesting and exciting, and my role as a creator is to maybe deliver something that people don't expect. Would I be doing my job as a creator if I was making the game you want me to make? I don't think so. I'm creating something that I find moving and meaningful. And I think people should see the scene, play the game, and see it in the context to really understand it. The rule I give myself is to never glorify violence, to never do anything gratuitous. It has to be a purpose, have a meaning, and create something that is hopefully meaningful for people. Now, while most agree that video games should be a viable platform for the exploration of difficult issues, there has been some concern that Detroit will fail to handle domestic abuse appropriately. For example, the game uses motion control. You shake the controller to prevent the abuse. Children's Commissioner for England, and Longfield, is quoted as saying that whatever the maker's motivations, is a quote, it seems to end up in a clumsy, inappropriate and graphic gameplay that is no more than an unpleasant, exploitative way of making money off the back of real suffering. And Tony MP Damien Collins, who is chairman of the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, went one further, insisting video games should not depict domestic abuse at all. Here's a quote. It is completely wrong for domestic violence to be part of video games, regardless of what the motivation is, he said. 
Domestic violence is not a game that is simply trivializing. It should really worry that people play these type of games who themselves have suffered abuse will use the game to shape the way in which they deal with abusers. It's dangerous to plant the seed in people's minds that the way to deal with abusers is to use violence against them. It is counterproductive and could put them in even more danger. Now, perhaps the strongest comment came from Childline founder Dame Esther Ranson, who called on Sony to remove the scene or pull the game from sale. Here's what Esther Ranson said. Violence against children is not entertainment. It's not a game. It's a real nightmare for thousands of children who have to live through these kinds of scenarios. The makers of this game should be thoroughly ashamed. I think it's perverse. Who thinks beating a child is entertainment? Now, for his part, David Cage told Eurogamer there are no limits as far as he's concerned as a video game writer. There are things I'd never do. I'd never do a racist game or misogynistic game. These are the limits. When you feel okay with the comment and that meaning, when you know that you have something to be ashamed of because it's fair and it tells the right story and because it's moving, there are no limits. And that's where the article ends. So look, this is a very, very sensitive subject, but here are my thoughts. And look, to be absolutely clear, child abuse is a very serious issue and in no way am I making light of it. But one has to ask, where does the line get drawn between actual reality and the depiction of reality within a video game or even when you watch a movie and read a book? If you're going to ask video games to omit these very realistic uh, depictions of life, then they have to be removed from all forms of media, movies, books, uh, you know, you can't just single out video games as a medium when books tell a very deep and meaningful story which is left up to the reader's mind as to what is going on. And movies, well, we all know about movies. So, surprise, surprise, UK news outlet controversy-seeking sensationalists, the Daily Mail, has called the Detroit Become Human video game repulsive. And the uh, Tory MP Damien Collins has weighed in as well, saying it's completely wrong for domestic violence to be part of video games, regardless of the motivation. Like I say, people who watch these movies with people getting their head blown off, child abuse, uh, you know, sexual abuse, this is all prevalent in today's uh, media, uh, in video games, uh, movies and books. You can't just single out one medium. It's just wrong. If you're going to ban it, ban it entirely but banning it would really just sweep things under the rug and how does it help the cause i think all kinds of abuse all kinds of violence and all kinds of transgressions against one person to another should be highlighted and it should be in the public sphere because simply hiding it doesn't do it really any justice and there's no way we can all have a conversation and i'm glad that this has really become controversial because we're at least having a conversation about it but that's my opinion what do you think let us know in the comments and in other news and our final news segment of the video the game awards jeff Keighley gives more info about world premieres for the show and pre-show here's the full story courtesy of jillshockers.com so Jeff Keighley shared that there will be, say, in between 15 and 18 world premieres split between the Game Awards and its pre-show. Game Awards organizer and host Jeff Keighley aired a quick live stream on Periscope giving some interesting information about the upcoming show and the world premieres that we are likely to see. According to Keighley, there will be in between 12 and 14 world premieres during the main show and between 3 and 4 in the pre-show. Even if the split might not be final, as he mentioned that things may be shifted around. When asked whether there will be a triple A game announcement or announcements, Keighley explained that everyone has a different opinion on what triple A actually is, but there will be some really cool surprises and new game announcements, of course, and it will be up to the viewers to decide whether they are triple A megaton level or not. He did not have any information to share on whether Nintendo of America President Reggie Filame will be in attendance or not, even if the executive has been present at all previous ceremonies. Interestingly, he has asked or was asked whether having PlayStation experience right after the Game Awards hurts the lineup of world premieres, and the answer was not really, as Sony has been a great partner for the show. Sometimes games are shown at the Game Awards, and then we'll see even more at PlayStation experience, and they have so many games that they they can afford to spread things out a little bit. 
Just today we learned that Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro will be present at the ceremony and during the broadcast, Kidi clarified that they will be presenting an award together. We also pretty much know that one of the world premieres is a release date announcement for Sea of Thieves. So that's pretty much all we know at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of nominations, some key games, some excellent games, a mixture of indie, uh, AAA, exclusives, you know, second party, third party, it's all good in terms of the Game Awards. And it is actually taking place on uh, December the 7th, which I believe is this Thursday. So do for don't forget to tune in and, you know, I'm sure there'll be various live streams available on Twitter and the Game Awards themselves will be doing so. But yeah, that's pretty much the meat and skinny. What do you think is going to win? I mean, I was pretty much surprised that Halo Wars 2 was nominated because that had quite a mute and very, uh, how can I put it, a very quiet launch in terms of the Xbox One and even indeed the PC. So it's at least Microsoft have at least one game in there and uh, Nintendo has a hell of a lot of nominations, a lot, and as does Sony, you know, plenty of Steam games thrown in there too. So I'm pretty much looking forward to this, and I will be covering the Game Awards and of course PlayStation Experience, so keep it locked to this channel and do make your comment about the Game Awards and indeed the whole controversy about Detroit Become Human, make your comments clear because this brings us to the end of another video, but I'd like to continue the discussion so I'd say share your thoughts on all of today's news in the video comments. For more PlayStation 4, Switch and Xbox news, go ahead and subscribe to Foxy Games UK. As usual, if you found any of the information in this video at all useful, hit that like button and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. You can also help the Foxy Games UK channel grow via Patreon. We offer just a one tier $1 pledge. You can find the link in the description. Thanks to all existing supporters and anyone else coming on board. And there we have it. Until next time. Remember, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching, everybody.